Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the 12th day of the New Earth Summit, now in its third year, India's first integrative summit on solutions to our problems in health, food, farming, and environment. I'm Sophie Sequera from Earthkeepers Goa, your host for this evening. And I extend a warm welcome to our esteemed panelists and to our audience. On behalf of our summit con convener, Daryl D'Souza, and our 10 Earthkeeper groups in India and overseas. We express our gratitude to you for taking time out from your busy schedules to be with us today and to share your insights and experience so that all watching this live webinar and its recording later may benefit from the holistic science and wisdom being presented on this platform that will help us all co-create a beautiful world. So our topic for today is unhealthy food. I'll start with introducing our topic presenter for today to the audience. We have three panelists. The first one is Pratiba Huda, who is a mind and body wellness guide. She is the mother of two beautiful adult children. She started her career as an educationist and went on to become an NLP practitioner. She learned yoga, worked as a yoga and meditation teacher, and then went on to learn and practice naturopathy. While guiding her yoga students about good eating habits, she felt that clean food is not easily available. So she began organic farming a month ago. She is the founder of Visokam, which is a food and wellness brand. Food is now her passion and she integrates all her learnings into helping people achieve their health and wellness goals. She helps people correct their food habits for better health and guides them with healthier alternatives to, for their current lifestyles and mindsets. Our second panelist for today is Naveen, uh, Naveen Kumar Toriappa, who has done a BE in mechanical engineering and then worked in the IT field for 15 years. Due to digestive related health problems, he quit his IT job and began looking for a permanent cure, which took him to various doctors and places. He tried many streams of health practices, such as allopathy, homeopathy, Ayurveda, and naturopathy. When nothing worked, he began exploring various aspects of holistic healthcare and found impressive results with a combination of Ayurveda and naturopathy. This completely cured him of his digestive problems. He then began teaching other people who were also suffering with digestive problems and noticed the great results with them as well. It inspired him to start his own healthcare company called Divine Veda that has been running for two years. And our third panelist, Daryl D'Souza, who has been teaching people how to reverse chronic illnesses with natural, integrated natural therapies for over 16 years. After his own journey of 14 years of illness that almost ended his life in 2004 due to allopathic medicine failing him. His book, Become Healthy or Extinct, as well as his lectures, seminars, webinars, workshops, and residential retreats on mind, body, and spirit healing are sought out by individuals and organizations across the globe. Daryl was the secretary of the World United Doctors and Healers Association for five years, during which he curated and convened their annual continued medico-spiritual education conferences. Daryl is also an industrial engineer, organic farmer, environmentalist, TEDx speaker, founder of Earthkeepers Connect, ambassador of Vegan Nation, convener of the New Earth Summit, and a speaker at the World Parliaments on Spirituality. His work is detailed on daryldesouza.com. So for the first hour of this webinar, I have a couple of questions for our panelists, which will be followed by question and answers with our audience at 7 p.m. 
who may type in their questions in the Q&A box below even before that time. If you would like to receive the recorded video of this webinar, or if you'd like to share it with others, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, The New Earth Summit. So now for my questions to the panelists. Um, Pratibha ji, could you please share with us what you consider to be the top three unhealthy foods and what are their healthy alternatives? Okay, Sophie, thank you so very much for the introduction. And uh, I would also like to thank Daryl for inviting me for this topic of unhealthy food items. So unhealthy food items, the list is rather very, very long. And uh, the food items that top my list, uh, the first and foremost is the table salt. So table salt is actually uh, the refined form of sea salt. Now, sea salt is an essential element of our food and uh, our body requires it for the proper functioning. So each and every cell in our body requires salt for its proper functioning. And, uh, you know, without salt, the body uh, cannot work the way it should work for being healthy. So uh, the point is that, uh, you know, the composition of this salt, sea salt is, uh, chemical composition is sodium chloride. So sodium as well as chloride, both are required by the body and body itself cannot produce them. Like for example, chloride uh, is a carrier of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is produced uh, by the body in the process of respiration. And uh, this carbon dioxide is produced at the cellular level and it is expelled out of the body through the lungs. So from the cell towards the lungs, it is taken by the chloride molecule. So uh, this is how the, you know, the requirement of the chloride is uh, there in the body. So we cannot say that, uh, uh, we cannot work, we cannot say that we can work without salt and salt is not good for the body, salt is definitely required. And what other functions are done by the salt is that it, uh, you know, regulates the pH levels of the body. It regulates the hydration levels of the body. It maintains the uh, different uh, uh, minerals, mineral levels in the body and helps in the absorption of different nutrients in the body. And uh, it also helps in the digestion of the food and uh, maintains the uh, bone density. So these are some of the functions that salt performs in the body. Uh, talking about the table salt. Now, as I said, table salt is the refined form of sea salt. Now, in the process of this refining of the salt, certain chemicals are added to it to make it uh, you know, free flowing. As we see that the table salt, which we, which is available in the grocery stores and which is being used at homes, which is being used at restaurants in the different recipes and in the preparation of food, that is a very beautiful white colored free flowing salt. So to make it free flowing, to make it white, to make it crystalline, certain chemicals are added to it. Now, talking about these chemicals, they are very harmful for the body. If I name a few of the chemicals, they are like magnesium carbonate, calcium carbonate, and aluminum hydroxide. These chemicals, they, uh, you know, enhance the toxicity in the body. They are like toxins for the body. And uh, these toxins, if I talk about aluminum hydroxide, for example, how it damages the body. This aluminum hydroxide uh, can affect the brain cells and it might result in the Alzheimer's disease in the people. So uh, if these toxins, uh, if the body is subjected to these toxins in the long run, it can damage in a way which cannot be repaired unrepairable damage can be done to the body if these chemicals are 
given to the body on a regular basis in the form of uh, along with the salt which is the table salt now uh, talking about you know the property of salt why the salt especially the stable salt is harmful as i spoke about the chemicals which are present in it also you know uh, the property of the salt is it absorbs the moisture from the atmosphere uh, i very well remember you know when i was a child my mother had this struggle of keeping the salt uh, free flowing like uh, it it used to turn runny so no matter wherever she stored it it uh, after few uh, days or months especially in the rainy season it used to turn moist so uh, that is what the property of the salt is it absorbs moisture from the atmosphere and uh, you know after few years i remember this free flowing salt came into the market and you know my mother was happy and everyone whosoever was using was happy that okay that struggle is over to uh, keep the salt in the air tight bottles or containers so this water retention property exactly the same function is done by the salt inside the body so what happens that uh, when there is excess of salt in the body this salt, uh, uh, you know for example there is if there is excess of salt in the tissues in the body so what happens from the cells the water is taken and given to the tissues like for example this extra uh, salt in the body works as a toxin to dilute this toxicity uh, the cells they have to give their moisture to give their water uh, to the to that particular area of the body where that excess salt is there if it is in the tissues water reaches to the tissues from the cells and uh, this is how the water retention happens in the body some people they have this issue of water retention in the body and uh, there is a, a ailment called oedema which is also you know kind of obesity which happens due to the water retention in the body and uh, same is when there is excess of salt in the blood so again uh, the blood takes water from the cells and uh, there is excess of water in the blood and uh, this causes uh, disrupts the you know osmotic level of the blood and causes the blood pressure in a person and uh, this in turn can put a pressure on the heart also and can result into different uh, heart ailments so in a way when there is excess salt in the body uh, the cells they provide their uh, water to that particular area of the body and in the result you know the cell gets dehydrated now that every cell requires water for its proper functioning now when it gives its uh, water uh, the cell cannot perform uh, in the best possible way and this is how the entire body gets affected when there is excess of salt in the body so the water which could have been used uh, properly by the body in the different uh, functioning different proper functions of the body now this water is being used to lower the toxicity of the body which is being caused by the excess salt in the body so this is how the you know the salt this is what the salt is doing to the body so uh, you know what else what other things can happen when there is excess salt in the body as i said you know the blood pressure happens when there is ex excessive uh, water in the blood and the person who is suffering from heart issues or bp issues uh, then the, there is further damage to their system and uh, this uh, excess salt also causes you know hardening of the arteries walls and it also causes you know the thickening of heart muscles then it also disrupts the you know the fluid balance of the body 
and then other issues that can happen. As I said, the entire body functioning is uh, hampered and affected by the excess salt. So the other uh, ailments that can happen are like gout and uh, kidney stones can be there, gallbladder stones can be there, arthritis can be there, the rheumatism can be there. So these are the various ailments that can happen due to the presence of excess salt in the body. So it is advisable to have the limited intake of salt because of all these reasons. Now uh, coming to the alternatives. What alternatives do we have? As I said, salt is essentially required by the body. So the first and foremost thing to remember is that use uh, as and when needed, uh, do not use it in excess and use it in limited amounts. And uh, also in place of using the table salt, which is the refined and processed form of the natural sea salt, uh, use the raw form of the salt like as I said, the raw form, it absorbs water from the uh, atmosphere, but that's okay. At least we can save ourselves from the unnecessary toxicity, which uh, is uh, uh, given to the body in the form of these chemicals, which are added to the salt. So raw form of salt can be used. Uh, then there is rock salt. Again, I have noticed that rock salt is also coming uh, in the market in the form of processed form. It's available in the market. So just make sure that rather than buying the powder form, you can buy the granular or the, the in the rocks form and then you can crush it and use it. And also Himalayan salt can be used in place of this stable salt. So in my opinion, this is the first uh, and the most dangerous unhealthy food item that should be avoided and that should be gone out of our kitchens and uh, of course we are eating in the restaurants and we are getting foods from outside and we are eating so many other delicacies where it is being used so we have to minimize the use of this salt if we want good health so that was the first uh, food item in the list and the second food item in the list is uh, white granular sugar so actually, these are the white poisons I call. Uh, we all of us, we health conscious people, we call them white poisons. So the second white poison which in the kitchen, kitchen which is being used is a white granular uh, sugar. So it is very important to know, uh, you know, what kind of sugar is good and what kind of sugar is not good. There are various varieties of sugars are available. Now, uh, this uh, white granular, granular sugar, which is available in the grocery stores, is almost synthetic and unnatural food item. So why I'm saying synthetic and unnatural? Because it's an industrial product. And uh, in the processing, again, I will say that uh, lots of chemicals are used. So I'm not going to name all the chemicals. Basically, this uh, granular sugar, it is uh, made from sugarcane juice. Sugarcane juice is a natural food item. But in the process of the synthesizing uh, of this refined sugar, all the natural elements, all the vitamins, all the you know enzymes, the proteins, whatever is available in the sugarcane juice, Everything is uh, just stripped off and what is left is a synthetic uh, item which uh, body uh, cannot handle. It is very, very difficult for the body to handle this food item because of the toxicity uh, being added to it in the process of uh, refining it. So a uh, few of the chemicals that are added are like Sulfur dioxide is one chemical. So why the chemicals are added? Because, you know, it has to be in the presentable form. It has to be white, shining crystals. So again, uh, you know, the white and crystalline uh, make it presentable. So sulfur dioxide is one uh, chemical and phosphoric acid is added to in the process of uh, 
refining, then calcium hydroxide is added, activated carbon is added. So the, in this process of refining, you know, this, this, this uh, sugar uh, is converted in the form of sucrose. Uh, like fruit sugar, the sugar which is available in the fruits is in the form of glucose. So this entire process converts the sugar into the sucrose and sucrose is uh, not easily uh, metabolized by our liver. And it becomes taxing for the liver to handle this uh, sugar. And uh, liver has to do extra efforts also to expel these chemicals, which I've named just now, out of the body. So, uh, you know, the, the uh, functioning of liver is it, it uh, works as an excretory uh, agent. It works as a uh, detoxifying uh, uh, organ. It also works as a synthesizing organ. It also works as a, a storage organ. So uh, liver is the one of the most important organ in our body. And when we subject liver to unnecessary uh, stress, by uh, putting in these kind of chemicals which are not required so the liver gets engaged in uh, you know clarifying cleaning the body uh, uh, because we've put in unnecessary elements into the body and the actual uh, functioning of the liver is hampered and this is how the entire body gets affected due to uh, this one element this one uh, food product which is there in our food which we consume unknowingly now uh, what are the other harmful effects if i talk about it of this sugar is that uh, you know this sugar this stable uh, sorry this white granular sugar is addictive uh, people who are consuming it uh, and who are switching over to the healthy options they can understand it that uh, uh, once you have the sugar, you get addicted to it. And why this happens? Because this sugar, you know, uh, drops the chromium levels in the body. So uh, chromium, the symptom of, uh, you know, lack of chromium or less uh, level of chromium in the body is uh, sugar craving. So anybody who is uh, having sugar cravings, that means his or her chromium levels are down. So what happens when uh, a person consumes uh, sugar, the chromium, chromium levels go down and the sugar cravings happen and the person end up eating more sweet items and uh, end up consuming more sugar. And then again, further the sugar, uh, the chromium levels are down. And like this, it becomes a, a vicious cycle. And uh, this is how it is. Uh, addictive and people do not come to know that they are, why they are having the sugar cravings. And also uh, this sugar uh, depletes the body of all the B vitamins, B complex vitamins. And also it leaches the calcium from the bones, from the blood and from the teeth. And uh, this sugar also, you know, affects the body's digestion. It gets, uh, you know, fermented, if it stays in the stomach for a long period of time, uh, it gets uh, fermented uh, inside and then stop the secretion of certain digestive juices and enzymes. And uh, this also results in the weight gain, irritability, mood swings and other side effects are there. So how weight gain happens is that, uh, as I said that, uh, you know, the refining converts uh, it into sucrose and fructose, which are not very well metabolized by the liver. And uh, so this excess form of now sugar, which is present in the body, it gets stored as fat in the various parts of the body, causing the obesity. And also it gets converted into fatty acids and bad cholesterol. Then, uh, this sugar also, you know, gives the temporarily feeling of uh, the feel-good factor to the body by releasing a, a hormone uh, called serotonin. So uh, it tricks the body into a temporary high 
causing a rise in the blood sugar levels. So this feel good is followed by a crash where a person feels, after that person feels tired, irritable, and sometimes even the depression also comes. Now, and another effect that it causes is that it uh, enhances the acidic levels of the body and uh, causing all the problems which are caused due to acidity in the body, for example, you know, high BP, constipation, etc. And uh, it can also result into the fatty leak. So these are the damaging effects of uh, granular refined sugar. Now coming to the alternatives of the sugar. So unlike salt, sugar is not uh, necessary for the body. Sugar is glucose basically. And as it is, whatever we are eating, it gets converted into glucose in the body in the simplest form of glucose is the simplest form of sugar so uh, it is not required by the body but still you know people have it because of the sugar cravings and as i explained that why the sugar cravings happen so uh, the alternative is that instead of synthetic go for natural kind of sugar so the sugar uh, that are present in the fruit is the natural form of sugar and uh, the people who are regularly having uh, you know minimum two servings of fruits in a day they do not have this these sugar cravings because uh, uh, you know the body is constantly you know uh, the body is getting satiated by the presence of uh, glucose in the fruits so sugar cravings are taken care of basically as i said that uh, people have sugar because of the cravings so another way of you know dealing the cravings sugar cravings is to have coconut water regularly that can uh, help in the cravings and also if needed in some kind of recipes like i myself make a few laddus where i use uh, dates in place of any kind of sugar so dates can be added to the recipes or date syrups can be used uh, in the recipes or for the sugar craving dates and raisins uh, they they can be taken and uh, <clears throat> another way of handling the sugar cravings is like having uh, which i myself do is a uh, uh, warm water a glass of warm water will you know disrupt the equilibrium of the cells and will help in handling the sugar cravings so uh, this is how one can uh, deal with the sugar cravings and uh, sugar as such is in any form is not advisable to have but if one is having then one should take care of that what rather than in place of synthetic sugar, the natural form of sugar should be consumed. So this was the second item in the list. And the third item in my list is uh, the fried foods. So uh, frying is a way of cooking. And it is especially used by restaurants and uh, food supply chain people. And why they use it? Because it's quick. It's easy and inexpensive way of preparing food. And mostly people, they like the taste of fried food. And uh, that is the reason that this way of uh, preparing food is popular. But uh, it is damaging. And how it is damaging uh, is that, uh, first of all, I'll say that it enhances the calories in the uh, if we talk in terms of calories, it enhances the calories in the body. So uh, what happens that uh, when food is fried, so the moisture or the water which is present in the food that is replaced uh, by the oil. And it this oil is added to the food. So uh, I have taken one, uh, you know, report I was going through on the net and then there was a report present which says that you know the comparison is done between the baked and fried food items so uh, for example a hundred gram of baked potatoes they have 93 calories 
and uh, zero gram fat. On the other hand, you know, 100 gram of fried potato, that is French fries, which is a very common food uh, available. And kids are especially fond of French fries. So the 100 grams of uh, French fries, they have 319 calories and 17 gram of fat is there in that. So this is how, you know, the frying of the food uh, raises the calories in the food. And another point is that uh, the fried food is high in trans fat. Now trans fat, they are responsible for the heart diseases and certain cancers and diabetes and obesity in the body. So uh, when oil is heated at a very high temperature, hydrogenation of fats occurs. And this is how the trans fats are formed. Now, uh, you know, in, in frying, you know, the chemical uh, structure of the fats is disrupted. And uh, after the chemical, uh, you know, uh, the bonding of the fat changes and uh, the new substance that is formed, that, that is very, very difficult for the body to handle. It becomes very difficult for the body to break down and uh, digest it. And this leads to the harmful effects uh, to the body. Uh, in frying, mostly, you know, uh, seed oils are used or vegetable oils are used, which are already uh, very high in trans fat. Trans fat and, uh, you know, when they are fried uh, further, you know, uh, the trans fats are added to it. And we also know that, you know, in restaurants or wherever outside we are eating food, they, they fry the same oil. Uh, they use the same oil again and again for frying they do not change the oil so every time when the oil is fried you know further the you know the amount of trans fat is enhanced in it and it is it becomes further dangerous and damaging for the body to use it so uh, this is how it uh, happens and it is especially risky for the people who have heart diseases and uh, it can also cause in the long run who are uh, regularly people who are regularly using uh, fried foods it can cause uh, heart problems and heart attacks now again also eating fried food puts uh, a person on the risk of developing type 2 diabetes and uh, there have been certain you know uh, observational studies again i have uh, noted it down from the internet that uh, uh, i'm quoting the results of those observational studies and uh, it says that uh, if a person is having four to six servings of fried food per week then that person has 39 percent more chances of uh, developing type 2 diabetes as compared to the person who is having one serving or less than that per week. So 39% more chances is a, a risky thing. It's, it's a risk if a person who is consuming fried food, that person is taking that risk. And uh, also, you know, the fried food uh, may contain harmful acrylamides. So acrylamides are again the toxic substances and uh, that can form in the food during uh, when, the, you know, during that high temperature, when the oil is heated to a high temperature, especially they are formed, uh, uh, you know, by a chemical reaction between the sugar and the amino acid, which is present in the fats in the oil, like starchy foods, potatoes, Starch is also a form of sugar. And uh, these French fries or potatoes, they, uh, fried potatoes, they are high in this toxin called acrylamide. Now, this acrylamide can cause, you know, uh, cancer of kidney, endometriosis, or ovarian cancer. It can result into all these things. Now, coming to the alternatives of the frying see uh, 
it's a way of cooking food so i'll say that there are various other ways healthy ways of cooking the food but why one should go for frying uh as i said uh, mostly you know uh, people they have developed taste for fried food or they are eating out in the restaurants or they are ordering food from outside where you know maximum point of time they go for this method so uh, i'll advise not to go for this method of cooking rather than use another healthy alternatives of cook- cooking which are like uh, one can go for boiling or baking or steaming or all that but if for whatever reason one has to go for frying like there are other members in the family also and then for the sake of other family members or the children sometimes if one has to do then my advice is that rather than getting food from outside do it at home so that way uh, you can ensure that uh you are not using the same fat same oil again and again you dis- you use the oil once do the frying and then discard the oil that is one way and uh, first is that do it at home then second is that you discard the oil after one frying and then also use the oils that are heat resistant uh oils that are you know uh, high on uh, high in uh, saturated fats and uh, monosaturated fats rather than uh, polysaturated fats so all the vegetable oils i'll say are uh, you know high in polysaturated fats the oil the healthiest oil i'll say is the coconut oil which is uh, resistant to the heat and uh, another uh, oil that can be used is avocado oil and uh, maybe olive oil i'm not sure about olive oil so that also i would like to discuss with daryl that uh, can olive oil be used for frying if somebody is willing to do it once in a while and then there is one more uh, option available which is air drying uh, air dryers are also available in the market but i am not too sure about uh, them because i have not used one so what happens in the air dryer is that the uh, you know very hot air the food is subjected to very hot air so the food gets crispy from outside but the inside water moisture is retained in the food so i think uh, air frying can also be tried but uh, that has still to be checked i have no idea much idea that what else it does to the food apart from you know keeping it healthy in terms of you know adding oil to the food so uh, these are the alternatives and uh, as i said you know the list is very long and i can go on and on but you know we have time restriction here so this is what from me uh, in terms of the unhealthy foods the first is salt second is you know sugar salt that is refined salt table salt refined sugar and the fried foods So that's all from me thank you so very much thank you pratibha ji for listing the top 3 unhealthy foods and their replacements so so far we've got table salt white granular sugar and fried foods so now i'll pose my question to navin kumar ji if you could tell us which other three foods are unhealthy and what are their healthy alternatives okay uh Uh, first of all uh, i would like to thank uh, daryl for giving me a chance to uh, talk in this program and also uh, thanks to sofia for the nice introduction uh, so i'll be uh, i'll be talking on three things one is uh, uh, milk uh, and another is uh, um, wheat and also the side effects of wheat and also maida and uh, the other third one is uh, monosodium glutamate so first of all uh, Mm, protein uh, in a uh, protein in cow's milk or as like any milk is uh, almost uh, uh, 3.8% whereas in human milk uh, the protein is only 1% uh, so for example if you can see uh, the mm, the milk uh, in uh, in uh, for example in cows and all those things if you can see those uh, uh, species 
they are they, uh, they are actually uh, they will wake up they will stand on their foot within uh, uh, one hour of uh, their birth whereas uh, uh, humans be human beings will take uh, uh, normally around uh, uh, one year to uh, 10 months to one year to stand on their own foot so this is uh, this is uh, so this only makes sure that uh, the uh, protein is designed uh, for, for as the cow's milk protein is designed to uh, for uh, not human beings it is not advised for human beings so and also um, if you can see in uh, adulteration adulteration in milk so it is very huge like uh, uh, so i myself have been uh, so, uh, around 20 years back i myself was in, uh, involved in dairy farming uh, so i know the uh, how it works and what are the side effects of uh, uh, what are the adulteration that happens over there uh, so and all those things so for example there will be a lot of uh, to thickening the milk they add urea and detergents and ammonium sulfate Uh, so caustic soda uh, something like that and also they add uh, sugar so this is a very huge uh, thing and also um, and the next next one is uh, hormones hormones in milk uh, so if you see uh, 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 normally the dairy uh, farmers uh, just to make sure that the uh, cow or as like the livestock uh, to yield more milk they will give oxytocin hormones so uh, this this is very dangerous and uh, uh, so this will make sure that uh, uh, human beings get uh, heart diseases and type 2 uh, diabetes uh, alzheimer disease diseases and also uh, uh, the uh, it will it will also lead to uh, uh, early puberty so this is one of the major uh, thing and also uh, nowadays people are getting uh, a lot of acne because of these things and also um, another thing that i want to highlight means uh, um, milk is uh, has a uh, lot of uh, influence on getting cancer like uh, especially breast cancer ovarian cancer and uh, and also prostate cancer something like that Um, and also um, next thing is uh, lactose uh, the sugar found in milk uh, and uh, this is actually this is the main culprit for uh, type 2 diabetes and also many people are intolerant to lactose um, and another thing is uh, dairy dairy cows and their manure uh, produce lot of greenhouse gas emissions which will which will directly contribute to climate change so this is uh, if you if you consider all these things so uh, milk is definitely not advised for uh, uh, human beings so if you then uh, if if somebody ask uh, so what is the alternative uh, so there are uh, for example coconut milk so and also almond milk so they are very very easy to make and uh, there is no scope for adulteration and uh, and also like uh, uh, it is you you can make it at home and uh, it is also very cost effective uh, so if you consider all these things uh, so it, and also it's very cheap relatively cheap uh, so uh, that is the alternative for uh, milk <clears throat> next is uh, uh, probably uh, uh, the another next uh, topic uh, that i want to discuss is wheat Uh, so wheat uh, as uh, most of you guys know that it has gluten protein uh, so this this is this is a major uh, culprit for uh, digestive disorders uh, so i myself was uh, diagnosed with uh, 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 ibd it is ulcerative colitis so this is uh, this uh, wheat gluten protein is the main cause for uh, this uh, ibd and also like uh, crohn's disease and also celiac disease for celiac disease the first thing they advise is uh, uh, for people to stop is wheat so and also irritable bowel syndrome mm, and uh, so uh, the exaggerated exaggerated blood sugar levels uh, in uh, wheat uh, so will also lead to hunger and also diabetes so uh, this is another one major thing Uh, and also like uh, m- m- people get many allergies 
because of wheat like uh, for example it may be pollen allergy and uh, food sen insensitivity uh, so all those things so and also the next thing is um, uh, high blood pressure and heart disease so this is uh, wheat wheat is the main culprit for uh, this uh, heart diseases and also and also like uh, mainly like mood mood disorders and also brain fog uh, so and also like uh, what have observed in my uh, uh, journey when i was healing uh, so with uh, from ulcerative colitis Uh, it it leads to lot of uh, consumption of wheat leads to loss uh, con constipation and uh, that in turn leads to many um, leaky gut syndrome and all those things so yeah uh, so this uh, especially this uh, uh, wheat uh, my naturopath used to tell that uh, you should bet on your gut uh, to get uh, uh, healthy to lead a healthy life so uh, and uh, wheat uh, wheat is uh, okay next is wheat is a uh, uh, wheat i found as a inflammatory grain uh, so and and also it is grown as a uh, monocrop so when whenever you are growing as a it as a monocrop you have to uh, one has to uh, one will end up using lot of pesticides and fertilizers uh, so whereas uh, um, okay next next when it comes to um, uh, what are the alternatives for uh, um, wheat so whereas millets like bajra and jowar so which can be uh, used as an alternative for wheat uh, can be easily grown uh, as a uh, without any first uh, pesticides and fertilizers and also and also wheat requires a lot of uh, water to grow uh, whereas bajra and uh, jowar and bajra needs very less water to grow so uh, this is this is one of the beneficiary benefits like uh, uh, like this is uh, because it also uh, leads to less water consumption uh, so and also bajra and jowar as good fiber and good nutrients for human beings so this is one of the um, uh, better alternative uh, that is what actually i did when i was uh, suffering with uh, irritable bowel disease and also uh, refined wheat flour uh, that is maida is um, is very bad and it has very uh, it has no fiber in it and also it is uh, uh, it has anti nutrients which is not good for our health uh, especially the gluten uh, is is a immunogenic anti nutrient so uh, unlike for example uh, fruits uh, so which are meant to be eaten Uh, and also like they get digested very fast um, whereas grains have a way to fight that because that is how that is how it, they have been designed uh, so they create a immunogenic response which increases inter, in, intestinal uh, problems thus uh, thus uh, that will lead to systematic inflammation in the uh, by the immune system uh, that can also lead to many autoimmune disorders like uh, Mm, ibd uh, ulcerative colitis crohn's and also uh, celiac diseases rheumatoid arthritis uh, so on uh, and also um, fight it the anti nutrient present in uh, wheat reduces the bio availability of micronutrients such as iron and zinc this will lead to uh, lack of uh, uh, one one uh, one will uh, become anemic uh, so uh, and also like uh, Uh, there is a uh, uh, when when people are uh, uh, manufacturing maida they use a chemical called alexin uh, so this process makes maida very soft and uh, it is it is very dangerous to one's health so uh, if you if somebody asks me what is the alternative for uh, wheat uh, i feel uh, uh, bajra and jowar are the best alternative for uh, wheat so and also it is very uh, it is also very cheap uh, and uh, abundantly available in the market okay mm, the next next topic uh, uh, that i want to discuss is uh, monosodium glutenate uh, so this is uh, uh, this is predominantly used in chinese restaurants and also like uh, in many fast food chains like uh, K kfc and uh, uh, mcdonalds 
so they they use it as a, a flavor enhancing agent uh, so this is when uh, when people start using it uh, then they normally get addicted to that food uh, so uh, that is the major the major reason why they uh, this fast food chains use that so this is um, the uh, side effects of using monosodium glutamate is so it leads to headache Uh, and also flushing, uh, sweating, uh, and also numbness in the face. Uh, so and rapid um, uh, uh, and lot of uh, uh, heart uh, fluttering heartbeats, like heart palpitations, and also chest pain uh, and uh, nausea, weaknesses, something like that. So MSG MSG is also linked to uh, obesity, metabolic disorders, um, and uh, something called Chinese restaurant syndrome. Uh, so and uh, neurotoxic effects uh, and uh, so all those things and also it will uh, it has a detrimental effects on the reproductive organs so this is uh, it is very dangerous so okay if if somebody ask me what is the alternative for uh, msg monosodium glutamate um, i feel one can go one can uh, as uh, pratibha was telling we can use uh, Like uh, uh, rock salt and uh, those things, and uh, the even better alternative is uh, we can go for bio salt. Uh, bio salt can be uh, uh, you can use a twenty percent salt and remaining water, and uh, by fermenting you can make it as a bio salt. Like uh, by using uh, the chili stalks or else like uh, the lady's finger uh, uh, portion. we can we can make bio salt bio salt is also very good uh, alternative for uh, uh, monosodium glutamate of course we may not get uh, uh, this type of uh, flavor enhancing but uh, when compared to the side effects and also the disadvantages so this uh, using bio salt or as like the normal salt is a very good uh, alternative so this is what uh, i wanted to tell and uh, so i covered uh, three of the Uh, topics like uh, milk and wheat and uh, another is monosodium glutamate yes uh, i am done thank you narveen kumar ji for your yeah. take and advice on healthier replacements yeah thank so you. now we've added milk wheat and maida and msd to the list i will now direct the same question to daryl which other three unhealthy foods could you elaborate on Yes. Good evening, everyone, and thank you, Sophie. Uh, thank you, Pratibha Ji, Navin Ji. Um, yes, I uh, thought I would, you know, share some more, uh, you know, very unhealthy and dangerous foods through some pictures. So I'm just going to share a few pictures, and I will, you know, give a narration in the background. So the first is, uh, you know. Uh, according to me unhealthy foods is what you can see there right in the center which is meats now uh, whether it is from a beef or chicken a pork goat or even if it's fish you know even that is the meat of the fish uh, now i presented this yesterday in the food master class where uh, with current evidence you see there are lot of laboratory uh, studies which are done by organizations and i would finally tell you that they are connected to companies who are into the business of manufacturing food so they bring out certain evidences which serve their model of food because it makes money for them but uh, as i presented uh, yesterday and anybody who is not watched that you can please look uh, up for the recording of the food master class um, on our youtube channel uh, Uh, it will come out in about 10 days the new earth summit on that youtube channel so i it was a experience that i took people into which was the test of the five senses you know where the first law was that god has uh, made uh, you know food available in its natural form to all species on the planet and all of them just find their food and they eat their food we are and they because their senses are tuned into that food so a tiger of course uh, it it's a natural taste is to go and eat a goat or a chicken right but uh, when we apply that same thing to our 
uh, senses and you can see all the food lying here in its natural form you can see that uh, no human being will want to go and eat that red piece of meat or the raw fish or just raw prawns but at the side yes you may want to eat the tomato or some onions uh, maybe raw capsicum you'll cook uh, just heat the uh, maize a bit and uh, put a little salt and you're fine with that but uh, when it comes to eating the meat just uh, heating it and just adding some salt is not good uh, good enough because then you also get the smell of the meat which is uh, you know really uh, it violates our sense of smell and uh, yesterday's uh, test was about that uh, to eat meat how you have to fool your taste buds by putting a lot of you know uh, uh, this uh, spices for tasting spices in it then how you have to even change the color of it by making it brown or green or orange tandoor and then you have to taste the uh, change the smell of it also and fool your nose by putting some you know fragrant herbs uh, and uh, then finally your uh, sense of touch also by making it nice and you know crisp you don't want to touch something soft and gooey and that has got slime on it so even uh, after cooking it people in the west they would use fork and spoon but indians you know we are very easily using our hands and our fingers to eat all of these vegetables so now the downside of all of these uh, meats are of course when they are made commercially all of these are fed you know pumped with hormones to shorten the growth cycle to make them fatter uh, so that is those are one set of growth hormones which causes a hormonal imbalance within the human body now the second thing is that uh, all of these animals uh, they are living in very uh, congested environments in cages and in sickly conditions so to prevent them from falling sick they are given antibiotics on a regular basis okay so it's put in their feed in their food sometimes twice a week or even thrice a week so uh, uh, that's what you get when you are uh, having these uh, uh, meats and the final thing what i want to say is that uh, all of these animals we have to understand that they are living in stress and especially at the time when they are being killed they are secreting all stress hormones in their body and all of these stress hormones are going into the flesh even if a fish is taken out uh, you know it's in trauma when it's dying so there's a lot of stress so when eating these meats we take in the stress as well and finally these are all acidic foods and they make our blood acidic and uh, they you know uh, shorten the life span of a person now for example you can understand that uh, people who eat meat all the time and there's no vegetables at all uh, like you know at the arctic and antarctic region eskimos they just have a life expectancy of 36 to 38 years i don't think anybody in the in our regions will be uh, okay with living only that short a life of course cold conditions are also there but uh, now what i also finally want to share is that uh, you know uh, people uh, who are going on meat diets uh, they are uh, doing it for losing weight but the important point is they are not losing weight because they are eating meat they are losing weight because if you see the diet plan in detail they are giving up all the earlier foods that our presenters uh, told us so the real weight loss comes from giving up milk from giving giving up sugar from giving up too much rice and wheat and fried foods and all of that so weight loss actually comes from there and not from eating meat so what is the alternative to uh, this food that is very unnatural to the body and uh, having all of these negatives and the last thing i also want to share is that uh, you have to put so much of spices and tasting and herbs to this that uh, basically uh, it's an overload on your taste buds that means uh, uh, the human uh, tongue and the taste buds are being uh, you know uh, uh, what is that uh, 
I mean, inundated with such strong herbs, which are used to cut down the actual taste of the meat, that your taste buds, uh, they get uh, depressed. And you are not able to get a uh, good taste from eating the tomato or the cucumber or the onion or the capsicum. So this goes into a spiral. Too much of spices that when they get into your body, they are acidic. Now, all of this, turmeric or pepper, you know, they are medicinal in their own way. Uh, but they have to be used in isolation as per the medicinal preparation. When they are all put together with such foods and they are heated up and all, their, their structure changes, their health properties go away and they create more of uh, acidity and more of gas in the system. So don't think just by putting spices and turmeric and pepper and all of that, you know, that uh, you're eating healthy food. So to avoid all this mess to the human body, what is the natural alternative? Uh, now, yeah, before that, I just want to uh, mention one more thing is that uh, what many nutritionists who favor, uh, you know, meat, uh, they try to go the scientific route and they uh, will come out with uh, blood tests that show that uh, just by eating a vegetarian diet or a vegan diet. So vegan diet is a vegetarian diet that, you know, is uh, doesn't have uh, honey or milk or eggs. So it's a complete plant-based diet. So now I'll just talk about uh, uh, what can go wrong there, uh, just a couple of factors. But uh, uh, nutritionists who prefer meat uh, say that uh, if you're on a uh, vegetarian diet, you lack certain nutrients. And they try to prove that through blood tests. And uh, so it will show that you're lacking in vitamin B12, it will show that you're lacking in vitamin D, and uh, so to make up those, they advise that uh, these things are there in meat. Now the real question is that, uh, what are the meat? Those, how did it get into the meat? Okay, what were those animals eating? And for example, the cow is a vegetarian animal, uh, or the goat is, and uh, they are eating, you know, uh, normal uh, leaves and plants, uh, plant-based food. And their nutrients actually come from, if they are in the wild, uh, they come from uh, naturally growing food. And those nutrients come from the ground. So when you get, uh, uh, you know, eat uh, these animals, if they're eating naturally, then good mineralized soils with natural food come into their body. And from there, they get all their vitamins. But what we are doing, where are the normal people from the city eating their food? They are eating it from commercial markets and all that food is grown on because it's a commercial operation. They grow crop after crop and the minerals in the soil get depleted. So people are eating minerally depleted soils and when the soils are depleted in minerals, then the plants that grow up from them, they do not have enough minerals so the immunity is low. Then when the immunity is low, they are not able to produce their natural microtoxins that fight off pests. And so the pest resistance of the plant is not high in a natural way. So the pests come and attack them. Then the farmer will spray pesticides on them. And that's the only way he will uh, save his crop. So you're getting minerally depleted uh, uh, vegetables along with pesticides that are coming into the cities and commercial markets. And that's what people in the cities are buying. And that's why they have lesser minerals in their food if they are on a, a complete plant-based diet. So what is the correction? The main correction is to have the right organic farming practices, which are having good minerals, that is minerally dense soil. Now, the further thing with this method is that if you want to really be scientific and find you know, any meat uh, that is there, which has got the nutrients, then you will finally land up at this stage where we say that, oh, you know, that human being uh, has got very good, you know, blood tests and all the minerals and nutrients are there. So why don't we, don't we eat the human being itself? Now, of course, that was being done um, some thousands of years ago and uh, in ca cannibalistic, uh, you know, societies. But because that is banned by law, you cannot do it. So definitely this is not science that you just go and eat any meat, any flesh that has got nutrients. You have to follow the proper uh, science in this way.
So I say a nutritionist is that one who really understands the flow of nutrients. And I think all the, you know, uh, nutritional colleges should take up these subjects in depth. Because only when you know, that's why I became an organic farmer in 2015. And from then, I got to understand how nutrients flow from the soil, uh, abundant nutrients to plants, and how with good nutrients, plants can stand up and fight off pests naturally, and they don't need pesticides. And then how those nutrients flow to either the animal kingdom or directly to human beings. And uh, that is the solution. So where are you going to get uh, such, uh, you know, uh, nutrients? Now, this is why I'm going towards and working with people in India for five organizations who have clearly, through their research and all, come upon this kind of, you know, uh, self-sufficiency in uh, states that we are working towards. That means your food should not be too far from uh, where you are staying. And different types of food that are local, seasonal, and organic. And you can have organic markets close by. And uh, since you don't have to transport it for long distances, you do not have to use preservatives and packaging. It's all a fresh daily market. Now, when you design, and this is what we're doing in Goa as a pilot project, over 600 to 1,000 acres, we are building a completely natural community with uh, natural groundwater, rainwater harvesting, natural homes, natural food. And here is where we get our nutrients. Uh, this is something that I presented yesterday also, that human beings, we should be getting the five elements, earth, water, fire, air, space, uh, in its etheric form, a good amount of it. That means fire element from the sun daily, water element, real water is mineral water coming from the ground. It is not the tap water that you get from the municipality in your pipes, which has been treated by chlorine, where there are no living probiotic bacteria that should be getting into your uh, digestive system every day. So you become deficient in natural bacteria because every day as you pass tools out, uh, there's an amount of bacteria that's going out. And the second thing is your food. If you are getting pesticide in food, then you're bringing it into the house, you're cleaning it with uh, vinegar water or you know salt water, you're killing all the microbes there. And basically, even if you're eating some raw food, they have no live bacteria within them. So you're not getting any supply of uh, probiotic bacteria. And so when you live in a society like that, you have to develop this new science called probiotics and different kind of probiotics. You have to make up for the mistakes that you have done. So the city living uh, model has got all these deficiencies. But once you start living back in natural surroundings, and that's why I came to Goa from Bombay. 10 years back, I understood this science very clearly. And I came back to the Goa so that, you know, uh, and uh, I do organic farming. Every day I'm eating, uh, I grow about 25 fruits and vegetables in my garden. And uh, I'm eating from there as much as I can raw to, you know, get uh, the natural nutrients. And we are having groundwater. And so that's how, that is the natural life. Science is not that you live in a concrete box and you start designing new, new things for all the deficiencies that you have uh, uh, designed for yourself. That is bad science. Of course, uh, that is promoted by a lot of people because more and more companies, you know, start uh, springing up to giving, uh, give you everything that is normally available to villagers and, you know, uh, as a natural part of everyday life. And all city people are buying such expensive food and living artificial life. So, uh, so this kind of future is the only one where, where, and these kind of surroundings are the only spaces where you will get real education and you will have a real life. And uh, we are saying that everybody stick in the world because of this modern kind of city development where uh, these things do not flow on a you know, daily basis. And the only uh, way we can save this destruction of people's health and the planet is by making more and more organic places like this. So what, what are the kinds of food that you get in places like this? Uh, now, what you see on top of there is an orange. Uh, these are called whole foods. 
Now God has designed or nature or environment has designed food in this way. So uh, if we are supposed to eat uh, all of these things completely because there's a balance. For example, that apple. You should be eating the apple with the skin and with the uh, all the matter inside and with the juice inside. And you should not be juicing the apple or juicing the carrot and throwing out the pulp. Because uh, the amount of time that is required in the mouth and the amount of saliva secretion that has to happen as you're biting one apple and you take almost five minutes to eat one apple, that is the way it is designed to be. Not that you juice three apples and from that you get one uh, 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 glass of apple juice and that apple juice glass you finish in 30 seconds. Whereas three apples you should have taken at least 12 to you know 10 to 12 minutes. So sickness starts coming in when human beings go and take whole foods and keep on subtracting things and saying, no, I don't want the skin or I don't want the pulp and all of that. That is the first step into sickness. So this is what I'm saying is real food. And uh, I'll come to some more principles of uh, real food in another picture. The next thing I want to talk is, yes, uh, you can see that is a wheat roti. And the next uh, uh, picture there in the bowl is flour and then the grain. So I've taken a picture where all these things come. First is the grain, then is the flour, then is what we make roti. Now, whether it's the wheat or it's uh, rice uh, or it's a dal or it's so many other grains, all of them have got phytic acid. Now, what is phytic acid and what does it do? Now, in the rainy season when the rice and wheat grows, right? Uh, after the rain stop in a month or a month and a half, it's ready for harvest. And if nobody touches it, the grains fall on the ground. And if nobody takes them away from there, the grains will remain on the ground till the next year. And all through the year, the grains will not sprout. So this is nature's way. So when will it sprout? Only when the rain falls again on it, the grains get soaked. And when the grains get soaked, the phytic acid that is there, it starts releasing. So till the time it gets soaked, what is the work of phytic acid? It's a, uh, uh, it's a binder. It, it's anti-life. So what is life? Life is that part where the grain starts sprouting and makes a new tree. So these, this is, it stops the process of all of this. Okay, so it is an enzyme inhibitor. And if you put it in your digestive system, it blocks the digestive enzymes and even metabolic enzymes. So this is the natural thing. So what are we supposed to do? Okay, what we are supposed to do is uh, knock off the phytic acid uh, from the grain before you take it into your system. Because if you take it in your system, it will do all these processes of blocking breakdown of food and also the absorption of nutrients. So that's why the recommendation is, and people are doing this everywhere. They're making rice rotis, they're making you know wheat rotis and so many other kind of rotis. And this you will uh, get in the restaurants, even at your home, all the maida, all the flour that is there has got phytic acid within it. So what is your option now? Your option is to either uh, uh, have the grain, cook the grain by itself. Okay, that is also after soaking it for whether it's, if it's, uh, uh, you know, millet. So the alternative to this uh, rice and wheat and all, what I think is healthier are millets. Okay, so millets is just cooked like a rice itself. So I don't even advise people to use millet flowers. Millets generally have lesser phytic acid, so you can soak it for about six hours uh, or four to six hours. But the rice, for example, you have to soak it for about eight hours. And if it's uh, something like the lentils, like dal and rajma, you know you have to soak it, uh, soak it overnight for almost eight, 10 or 12 hours. And that white frothy uh, sour water that comes in the morning, that is phytic acid. And that has to be thrown away and uh, the grain has to be washed again so little traces of the phytic acid are gone okay so 
so that is the second uh, point that I wanted to make that uh, I've seen only one company in India so far where it's written on the packet because they know the sign and it is written that our grains are first soaked, the phytic acid is released, then they are dried, then the flour is. So that kind of flour is okay for roti. So this effect of this, people with IBS and colitis and all of that, they will see the first. The healthiest person who has got a strong gut will not see the effects of this. But over some years, it will make their intestines weaker and weaker and this is what is happening to people. But a person who has got some gut infection from gastroenteritis or some maybe big dysentery like how I used to have or maybe colitis or Crohn's, this affects them very quickly. You will see that if they stop uh, eating these flowers and they go for uh, the cooked grains which are soaked and then cooked, their digestive system will really improve. And of course, digestion process and the absorption of nutrients and the amount of energy that you feel also in the body will improve. The last I wanted to talk about is uh, processed foods. And this is the main culture in the world today where everybody you know, is having such great fun going into the malls and into the food section where right from the ceiling to the floor, you get all of these packaged foods. Now, packaged foods are uh, what is contained in them they are containing, for example, uh, as in the effort to make things cheaper from natural, you know, or tasting agents or coloring agents, they start putting chemicals in them. Then there will be a preservative, which is another chemical. Then there will be a stabilizer. Now, whenever you see the word stabilizer, whatever the chemical name, what is that stabilizer? Okay, the stabilizer is uh, a master chemical that neutralizes or cuts down the cross reactions between the other chemicals and the food. So the stabilizer is not put there, the food and the chemicals, some parts of them, they may cross react and spoil the food. So literally, whether it's a metal can of tomato soup, or it is a tetra pack, or it is a glass bottle with the words preservatives and some chemical name on it, and uh, some kind of stabilizer, then this is literally atomic warfare that is there in the tin. And so what we go and do is we open this tin, bring it home, open it, and then we allow this atomic warfare to happen in our body. So on the right hand side, this is what happens. They are free radicals. They start robbing electrons from right from our mouth, from our throat, our intestine, stomach, intestines, colon. And the first signs of this, the first level of damage is if you're eating less of it, the first level of damage is inflammation. If you're eating more, ulceration. And even more, tumors. And then finally, cancer. So these kind of food formats are very, very damaging to the human body. Uh, all of us should get off it and get onto fresh food uh, for good health. Now, what are the other damages besides our health? Uh, that happen because of these packaged uh, and processed foods. Of course, this is the second uh, diagram where all of this not only happens to our digestive system, all this uh, toxicity from them gets absorbed as nutri nutrients into the bloodstream. And then we are having the hardening of our arteries and our veins and also the formation of uh, plaque and cholesterol. And Cholesterol and plaque will keep on because uh, you see cholesterol is produced by the liver in response to what? As our digestive systems and our uh, blood vessels, uh, when they start getting uh, uh, damaged and uh, corroded and cracks develop from the, uh, the blood vessel itself, uh, because blood is there, the cholesterol, the cells of cholesterol are made by the liver. And uh, the liver gets this message from the brain. Brain gets the message from the digestive system that there is injury, there is scarring, scarring there is ulceration. So uh, it sends a message to the brain and brain will tell uh, this, uh, the liver to make cells of cholesterol and release them in the blood. 
because cholesterol is that part that goes into a certain damaged site and it forms into that cell. I'll just give another example. You know, when you're brushing your teeth in the morning, one day you miss and you hit your gum very badly and a little blood comes. So, okay, that day the blood stops in five minutes. But next day you'll see a yellow patch. Now, from where did that yellow patch come? It did not come from your saliva, from somewhere outside. From inside your blood vessels, uh, all those yellow spots were deposited from the bloodstream onto that patch. And you see a yellow thing there for one, two days, it burns a little and then it settles in four, five days. It becomes your skin color. It's a little pink. And then after the sixth day, you'll see, okay, now it's gone and it's fine. So this is what cholesterol is produced by the liver for. To uh, Now, this is the starting of your digestive system, your mouth. I mean, we only are, you cannot see any... Uh, where else? And the only other uh, place you can feel up your digestive system is your in anus when you're washing up. So the rest of it you cannot see. In. So this is the damage that's happening everywhere in your body. And the highest damaging uh, factor is this, uh, you know, packaged and processed foods. And another one that causes hardening of the blood vessels and cracks is what uh, Pratibhaji mentioned, uh, cooking oils, especially refined cooking oil. And also salt which is, uh, you know, uh, my own uncle uh, in this uh, house of mine in Goa died from enlarged heart and hardened walls of the heart and also his arteries because of too much salt in the diet. So, now what else? Besides this damage, what the two processed uh, foods do to the entire planet? The amount of tin we are using now, first of all, I'm saying that format of food is not required at all. We see that you move into spaces where there is fresh food. The first the reason why you should do it is for your own health. But in the bargain, what else will be happening is that if the amount of processed foods and packaged foods come down, then that much amount of tetra packs come down. So that much amount, lesser amount of trees on the planet are cut. And uh, the left-hand side down picture is the amount of mining that is done to make all these tin. The uh, picture on the right-hand side bottom is the dredging from the sand from the coast and also the riverbed to make all these glass bottles uh, that we are buying. And on top, that is the amount of crude oil for petroleum products, which is all the plastics uh, and all the cartons that have got plastic lining and all of that. So just for the sake of eating these atomic warfare foods and kill, uh, damaging ourselves, you know, we are uh, damaging the entire planet as well. So the best thing that you do not need to be a big environmentalist to go and stop people from cutting trees and stop mining and stop the sand. If you change your food habit and eat fresh food of, on a daily basis from your local market, that will save the entire planet. And the fourth thing is, yes, all of these factories that are running just to make these formats of food for us. They are blowing uh, all uh, toxins in the air. They are using electricity. They are using fuel. They are using coal. They are uh, contaminating the water that is there. So this is the extent of damage that is being done by this entire package and processed food industry. Now, finally, uh, this is the food supply chain. And I just want to share something very important. Uh, this format of packaged food is being made by certain companies and certain manufacturers. They are doing it mainly for their profit. Okay, and it is actually a system of money flow. Now, those people who will buy locally, fresh, and uh, you know, from their surroundings, uh, the, the money flows in that area. But these smart guys, they will market their things so badly and put such uh, big tasting agents in them which make us sick anyway because they want the money flow in their direction. Okay, so to such an extent, the marketing and sales are done that you will forget what is the, your neighbors growing and you will go and you know buy all of these things so it is just a big money flow business why does kellogg's and all have to be the biggest you know thing in the world and so many of these big man fmcg companies why do they have to be so huge and having you know this all across the world 
and all of their uh, products that are uh, produced and transported so much of transport and those vehicles uh, and the petrol and the expense and the packaging right this whole planet is being eroded and you know excavated and all holes are being made into it just because of this one play businessmen wanted a bigger uh, chunk of the money so they made all these products that you cannot make at home so that the money flow goes to them i, I have no problem with businessmen making a lot of money a businessman in your state or in your village could set up things and run a very good business by uh, giving you fresh food daily from fresh farmers he could do the transport he could take a percentage in it right there are ethical and healthy ways of doing business and getting your food and healthy food unfortunately this is the state of the planet right now and the saddest part is all of us human being who are buying all these packaged food products we have made these guys profitable and as big as they are so if you want to change the system and the amount of damage that it's doing to the planet please change uh, you don't have to go and fight any of these guys uh, and you know take mocha against them that stop doing this stop doing that stop excavating give us natural food formats and i mean natural packaging and all you have to change the decision in your dinner table at home and what you eat in restaurant right so go for fresh food all of the time and stop all of these package and process food that is the biggest you know uh, do it for yourself do it for your own health the entire food supply chain will start correcting itself because all those packaged foods at the retail store if you don't pick them up they will remain there they will their date expire that message will go to the growers and the you know the stockers and uh, they will stop producing those things so we are the people only if we just focus and be very clear that i want every day fresh local and if possible organic food then it's good for my health and it is going to stop uh, the damage of this entire planet so that's what i started doing right uh, making my own food of course everybody doesn't have time to you know uh, take out uh, uh time and grow i mainly did this to set for my own health and to set a good example and you know start promoting an organic farming community here in goa so these are some years back uh, in my own uh, i grow about yeah 25 uh, fruits and vegetables every day we get uh, four five things from the garden and um, uh, so yeah, otherwise you can start a community farm or at least allow you know in the state so the design that we are doing uh and those of you uh, y'all who want to collaborate with us uh i will be going to delhi also in uh, first week or second week of december to with these organizations to integrate uh, the model which we are going to uh, you know publicize and promote across india so this is all for the uh, health of people and to make state self sufficient so that uh, we have less of you know transport for food for work and all of that because in the current model that we are running there is no future of this planet more than 50 years but you will be surprised that the designs that we are doing the organic designs we are at least designing the future for the next 2500 years for the entire planet and it doesn't matter yes if we can do it in a few states in india let us do it there let us set a good example that the government see and that it go all over india and all across the world there are people also across the world who have such good ideas and uh, uh you know we have to uh you know help them also uh you know go forward again in our local spaces and all again the same pictures there eat uh, local seasonal fresh and whole food so yes that those are the three things that uh, i want to present uh, which i think are very really important uh, on a daily basis our daily action uh will give us an increasing amount of health not only to ourselves but the entire planet thank you daryl for your insights and further adding to the list with animal based foods flowers and packaged and processed foods so my next question is open to all panelists now that we've just uh, we've covered 
the top nine health unhealthy foods, what else can be added to the list of unhealthy foods? Would anyone like to take that? So uh, another thing that we can add is the uh, stale food. Stale food, when I'm saying, I mean to say is that uh, the food which is cooked uh, in the morning and if eaten uh, in the evening or cooked one day prior, that is the stale food. And you know, the germs and bacteria and uh, fungi, they start forming their colonies. And that's how that is also the unhealthy food uh, and it should be avoided as per my understanding. And uh, another uh, thing is that microwaved food. I would like to add is that uh, microwaves, what they are doing to the food, they are totally changing the chemical structure of the food. Suppose uh, you're cooking food or heating food in the microwave, you are uh, happily putting your platter or your dish, which is uh, well balanced and having the good nutritional value. But uh, unfortunately, what comes out of the microwave is uh, not the same food having the same kind of nutritional value, but the nutritional value is depleted because uh, as I said, microwave changes the you know the chemical structure chemical bonding the molecules of the food and uh, this is how it damages the nutritional value of the food and uh, these are the two things uh, which i wanted to say uh, i would like uh, Naveen Kumar yes to yeah I just uh, mentioned something further on the microwave food is for people you know to get a practical experience of it uh, because uh, yeah, when the microwave is on, it uh, vibrates the water molecules in the water content in food and it changes its molecular structure. So do one say a simple thing, take a freshly cooked, uh, you know, a plate of rice, okay, and let it come to room temperature. Then that plate, you put uh, three small China ware uh, uh, saucers and, uh, you know, one uh, uh, kind of uh, spoon of rice uh, or two spoons you put in one plate just put in three different plates. Okay, the first uh, plate you heat it in the microwave for one minute. And the second plate you heat it for two minutes. And the third plate you heat it for three minutes. And bring it out and let it cool to room temperature. Now the original fluffy rice, you know, right from our childhood, we know that it's got starch and that's got a certain property of glue. So we take that and you can take that fluffy rice and you can uh, stick a paper with it. In 10 minutes, as it dries up, that paper will stick. Okay. Now what you go and do is that third plate that was heated for three minutes and which has come to room temperature, you take that and make a paste of it and go and stick it on the paper. It will appear like it is sticking and after 10 uh, minutes that you may find it together. But as soon as you touch that paper, after 15 minutes, you open it, it opens up and there will be all crumbs. The starch contain everything. The first uh, one that was, you know, cooked naturally, that will be stuck together. So that starch and all the properties are there. But this third, three minute one, you'll see that it all powder comes out. So this is the kind of molecular structure that is being changed. And we have to remember that this human being, it has evolved. And since thousands and thousands of years, it has known the ac actual structure of rice, organic, natural rice and all of that and its system is tuned to that. Now, when it gets a different molecular structure, it, how can it accept that as food? It does not accept that as food and it prepares a defense system or to block the complete absorption of such food. So you're giving your digestive tract a lot of work uh, to block certain things and molecules that it cannot recognize and such molecules come from microwave operation. Very true. So, yes, so you will end up eating a volume of food, not getting the nutrients and feeling hungry and eating more. So then you'll have that big pot belly and the slow amount of food. You see, when you eat too much and too often, your entire digestive tract system, it slows down. When it slows down, too much of the absorption and obesity is going to be a natural. Okay. No, I would like to add... Uh... Uh, about uh, preservatives added in the food. So day I feel uh, because normally preservatives are added uh, to make sure that the food, uh, food doesn't get spoiled. 
so uh, the very moment we when we eat these things so the uh, the same thing it will not get digested and uh, in re, in turn the same preservatives will go on into our digestive system and it will also get uh, uh, spoiling whatever the uh, uh, good bacteria that we have in our digestive tract and uh, this will lead to uh, uh, the growth of bad bacteria whereas the good bacteria uh, the amount of good bacteria will come down so i feel preservatives are one of the very um, uh, unhealthy foods uh, unhealthy like uh, things that we consume yes and just i'll add one more line to that to make it very clear to people right food is uh, absorbed after it is broken down yes but in your food if you are going to put a preservative and that preservative you are going to eat in your body how are you expecting it to be the broken down when the preservative was also there with it exactly so the preservative will block the breakdown of your food yeah then yeah one more thing which i wanted to add is in the category of uh, whole foods um the amount of uh, juicing people are doing nowadays right so it, we have to remember it is not a natural format of food uh, i in my chapter there is a book uh, of my book become healthy or extinct there is a chapter called blending but where some fruits and sometimes the vegetable also are blended but those are used only as medicine when a person has got certain sicknesses it reflects that there are certain mineral deficiencies within the body and that combination of juice has got the high concentration of those minerals or those vitamins and then you take it at that time as a medicine juicing is the juice is not supposed not even this mosambi juice not even this you know orange juice you have to eat it with the fiber and all of that that is within it of course without those white strings but that is the actual uh balance of food it's a category of food items like baked bakery items i would say uh that is also unhealthy uh whether it is cookies or biscuits or cakes or pastries all of them are come into the category of unhealthy food items the reason being again the same like they are uh, made using uh, maida as uh, navin kumar said and also you know the oils uh, which are used the refined oils which uh, daryl has covered in the processed food items and the sugars which i've already spoken about or the creams which are you know the 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 pastries and cakes uh, you know the icing and all that is done so all of these are total uh, you know waste of money waste of health so that should be avoided and uh, yes uh, pratibha ji you know we should uh, uh, go our act our body is actually asking us for real food now what is real food okay and i'm uh, reflecting on what pratibha ji shared earlier about the necessity of fruits and i simply say that that person who is not having enough of fruit as per their body requirement per day you know even if it's two small servings or one big serving till you are full uh that person who is not having enough of that natural sugar in a day they will develop develop a deficiency and it will manifest as sugar craving so now you want something sweet which is your natural tendency which you've not been getting through fruits if you're not eating enough and that natural ten- uh, that sweetness you can put on anything that's why people are going to the sweet shop and they are eating just maida with sugar and it's got two three different kind you fry it it's called another fruit you bake it it's called another thing right then all the milk sweets also uh, just put sugar in anything and human beings will eat anything so we uh, we eat lot of unhealthy foods just because there is sugar and you see when you go to the ice cream shop also what are you having you're having mango ice cream custard apple ice cream peachy ice cream your body is just asking for these fruits that's all your body is not asking for you know cream and milk so please look at all even all the milk shakes look at all the this uh, softy smoothies blueberry and all your body wants cranberry and blueberry okay so get that part of the science very clear 
uh, you will go. So not uh, a sugar craving. A sugar craving is equal to malnutrition in your body. You are a victim of malnutrition if you have sugar cravings and you're going for methyl. So please cure that. There's a process of 21 days which I used in uh, 2010. And because I had terrible sugar cravings because I was not eating fruits every day. Every morning I would have one type of fruit uh, for breakfast, how much I wanted, like uh, half a papaya, depending on the size of full papaya, if it was small. And then some days like three apples or four apples, still I enjoyed it completely. And I did that for 21 days, 22 days. After that, so many years of sugar craving just went away. There would be mitai in front of it and I would not feel like eating it. And somebody would say, you know, have some. And I would, they would force me, I would say at that time that, okay, I'll just eat it because you're asking me. I was not desperate. Others, I was the guy who used to stay, go into the mitai shop and every time on my mind, I have to come out with at least four items, not less than four items. And gulab jam used to be one of them with the sugar syrup. And I used to drink the syrup also. So that kind of, uh, so sugar craving, you cannot break with a new year res resolution or your resolution to drop four kgs. You do it for 15 days, one, one week or one, uh, one month. After that, you will yourself finding up yourself, getting up in the middle of the night and opening this bridge when nobody's there and eating all the chocolate bars and in the morning, you know, then nobody knows that you eat this slum. <laughs> so all this crazy behavior of uh, sweet tooth, sweet tooth is not come from your grandmother. It's not in your parents' genes. It is a nutritional deficiency. So do the right oh. practice and let your body function correctly. So I'll just take up the questions from our audience. Um... Okay, is uh, Sony Thomas would like to know, is buttermilk healthy or safe? So at least, yeah, in the category, you know, I have a presentation uh, on milk and uh, uh, milk products. Of course, the ones that come from the factory have got more chemicals and hormones, but the ones grown naturally also, the cows, organic, grass-fed, holy cow of India, right? Even that has got high amount of... Uh, uh, this, you know, uh, growth hormones, which are meant for the rapid growth of the calf to grow to a full size cow, you know, within uh, 18 months or, uh, or two years. So uh, you will get hormonal imbalance from that and you will get uh, cataract and glaucoma. There's a slide in which I've got uh, 18 of the most common illnesses. Uh, and even with from organic uh, grass fed uh, Indian cow, you will get uh, hormonal imbalance. Uh, PCOD, fibroids, bulky uterus, and all of that depends on how much milk you're having. Uh, perhaps uh, this uh, cataract is only contributed by cow, cow's milk. Otherwise, acidity you get from cow's milk because of the very high, uh, you know, uh, molecular weight of the casein protein, which is 18 times heavier than uh, lactoalbumin, human uh, breast milk uh, protein, and that causes acidity. So, of course, acidity is caused by too much of sugar, too much of meat, too much of alcohol. But uh, so there's a range of about 18 uh, of this, even arthritis, uh, also uh, this kidney stones, uh, tumors, cancer, all of these come from milk, which is an unhealthy food and an unnatural food. Even there is no mammal on this planet having milk after the age of three, three years. There is no logic for us to have it. And because we have it, all of these illnesses come. So in my same book, uh, Become Healthier Extinct, please read pages 120 to 125. You'll be shocked at how unnatural milk is and all the types of uh, illnesses it causes, including uh, sinusitis, chronic cough and cold, tendency to pneumonia, bronchitis, tonsillitis, all of that. So when I'm just saying uh, the more concentrated amount of milk is in cheese, okay? So, because it takes that many liters of uh, milk more to make a concentrated cheese. And uh, you will see now the kids, especially youth, uh, in uh, girls who are having, uh, you know, irregular periods. And I'm treating uh, girls in Goa whose periods have stopped at the age of 18. They started at 13. They were painful periods. They don't know what normal periods are. The first period itself was painful. And then it got into missing days and all that. And by the age 18, there are no more periods. It stopped. That means she cannot have a child. And why is this happening? Because the amount of milk products and the amount of cheese and all, and especially this is happening because outside all the colleges, you have got all this. 
you know, uh, McDonald's and softy smoothie, ice cream parlors and all of that. Uh, in 2005, when I started treating people, women uh, used to come for treatment with, uh, you know, problems of fibroid and PCOD. And their age was like 38, 40, 42. And what has changed from then in the next 15 years for girls to get, PC, uh, first they get uh, this uh, uh, cysts on the, uh, this fibroids in the uterus, little bit of fibroids, and then uh, uh, this uh, cysts on the ovaries come a little three, four days later, I mean years later. But the young girls are getting it now at about 16 to 18. And the only difference is the density of milk products that they are subjected to with the double cheeseburst pizza and all of those things. Okay. So uh, I'm just saying that uh, as you dilute milk, of course, the toxicity and the negative effects will get diluted. And it is also there in buttermilk. So is, if you're okay with a little damage in buttermilk, then you know that's the formula. But instead of that, now what you actually want from the buttermilk is to get your good strain of bacteria, right? So you get your good strain of bacteria from probiotic foods. So there's a probiotic chapter in my book. You'll get some idea of how to make cultured vegetables, how to make sauerkraut, how to make kanji. Those are all the fermented things, okay? Like I said, fermentation, human beings had to learn from the time they started cooking their food, whether it was 6,000 years or 8,000 years back. As we started lessening the amount of fresh food with live bacteria coming into our body at that time, uh, and we went to more and more cooked food. Since that time, we have to make more and more probiotics. So let's, uh, uh, you know, uh, use the healthy way of, uh, you know, healthy medium of getting uh, probiotics, which is through uh, water and through vegetables and through kanji and all of that. And we can leave out even this, you know, uh, buttermilk. Also, I just want to share some very basic science, which is that as we are growing up and we are being breastfed, certain types of lactobacteria and all, they will come from breast milk. And once you start going through and start getting teeth and you start eating, you know, uh, fruits and vegetables and all of that, nuts, beans, peas, all of those things, there are different strains of bacteria that are coming. So the human being is designed for a shift in the flow of the bacteria and their content as you switch from uh, breast milk to later kind of normal foods. So I don't see which are the scientists on the planet who have identified this and telling us the science very clearly that human beings, uh, those strains of bacteria coming from mother's breast milk and all, they will they inoculate your gut and that supply is supposed to be there. And you know, but after that, other strains of bacteria need to also populate because now, it's not just milk that is being digested, it is many other things that are being digested. And those things that are being digested, their bacteria will come from the source where those things are grown, right? So, so I don't see any uh, sense in people still drinking, uh, you know, lassi and chas and all to get those strains of uh, bacteria that would come from milk only. It's, it's not science. And you say to say that you know the buttermilk which is available in the market uh, in the packets that lots of companies are making uh, see we are as you said we are having buttermilk for probiotic but actually uh, the probiotic is not available in there otherwise you know that will get uh, uh, stale or sour very quickly so already the companies they delete the probiotics from those uh, buttermilks and those charts and those uh, uh, curds uh, so Market wala buttermilk or curd or is no good for even probiotics. Yes, you know, and I'll just answer my own question. What I asked, I asked, you know, where are the scientists who are doing this, you know, research and showing us the truth? Now, the fact is, all these published uh, uh, public papers from all these universities and research institutes, you will only get for commercial products. Because all those institutes are run by all these commercial institutions only. They will only bring out research which shows their kind of manufactured products have got these things. There is nobody, a big organization or corporate or any health ministry of some uh, country, uh, you know, who is actually uh, teaching people the living natural sciences, which will allow them to be healthy from their local resources in their place. Why? Because there is no money 
in it yeah. if you we teach you like what we are doing today if we teach everybody how to grow your own food how to get your probiotics from your surrounding how to form a small community and do business and have a fulfilled life right then how will there any be, be any business entities and from where they will make money so this is the same thing with this entire covid hoax that's happening across the world we are having a tough uh, time in courts also because i work with the awaken in india movement and the courts only want research papers from established institutions across the globe now these are the same institutions that are being funded by uh, you know all these vaccine manufacturers and this pharma lobby over the last 120 years that has given us fake medicine so uh, you get only some independent scientists who are doing the real science and when we present that uh, the court is saying what is this research paper it has to be from a peer reviewed per peer reviewed journal and from this institute and that institute and all of that so this is the current very sad state of the world uh, if you are looking at whatever is being thrown out at your faces and it is attached to any industry food industry or medicine industry they are all uh, results that will support that kind of business and we've all been a consumers of this business and that's why all of us are sick and this entire planet is you know in a model of uh, just consumption and uh, uh, you know uh, the uh, destruction of non renewable resources so that's why the whole new earth summit is about this uh, so these are all the components that bring our current future which is there's no future more than 25 30 or 50 years it's only people who will do the right research go into the right science and live locally you know these uh, uh, and the indigenous communities we did a presentation on this the indigenous communities were self sufficient and living their own lives you know very low carbon footprint and they were doing no damage to the earth so we have all to move from this commercial model commercial food you know commercial research into our own communities uh, and do our own research and see what serves us Uh, make our own food, work out our own healthcare sciences, and uh, so yeah, it's it's come to a time where only people can help people, and that's yeah. cool. so that's true okay. that if your food is somebody else's business, that know that health is not being served to you. Health is being served to you only when you grow your own food. The business people do not uh, provide you health. That's true. and very good work daryl you are doing in this thank you thank you uh, thank you yes uh, and you also you know very uh, wisely come into the field of organic farming and i wish you also pratibha all the best uh, we have to set good examples uh, uh, for people and especially those are good examples who people have not had a farming background like your husband is an army man and you have been also in the you know teaching sciences and that you are becoming a farmer that i am an industrial engineer becoming a farmer uh more people like us should go out and tell people you could be from any background please if you care about health and you know you care about food and you have some ancestral property or you want to go and live in a healthy place please go back to your village and start doing all of this work for yourself and for people around you and take friends also along so you have a nice small community with good ideas watch all the videos of the new earth summit uh, on our website the new earth summit.com there are the videos of 2019 2020 and now we put up 2021 they all give the designs of all how to build self sufficient communities in all of these aspects okay so that's why we are doing and it's called new earth the summit because of that the this current earth is damaged and exploited so badly by capitalists and uh, the wrong you know use of money power and control that uh, we are all destroying ourselves so so we have to uh, have a decentralized model with uh, people with local self sufficiency and people learn the sciences and they implement it locally so that's that's the future i mean this is what we have been uh, we have been forced to do this if we want a future more than 25 30 years so uh, you know let us take it up and let us do it. thank you daryl and thank you pratibha ji uh, we have quite a few questions to get through so i'm going to club two questions together one is what is the difference between plant based and vegetarian diet and why shouldn't we have honey um 
Okay, so I'll just uh, do that very quickly. Uh, the difference is that uh, plant-based means everything that you put in your mouth should have originated from a plant. Okay, so do eggs originate from plants? No. Do, do, uh, does milk originate from plants? No. Does honey originate from plants? No, not the bee honey. You can get flower nectar. Yes, that originates from plants. Now, so who, who will be the people who will ask, can I have honey? Can I have honey? Please give me honey. They are the same people who are uh, suffering from malnutrition of natural sugars. It means they are the ones who are not having enough fruits in the day. Now, for example, honey is used in Ayurveda and Chavan Prash. So it's used as some, you know, medicine. But now from an organic, you know, farmer's perspective, I am seeing that we are growing this uh, plants over here. We are putting the seeds. Uh, the male and female flowers are coming, but there are no uh, uh, those kind of bees that uh, feed on those. The population of those bees are gone, and now we are not. The the pollination is not happening, and I am having to take the male flower, break it from there, rub it on the female flower, and all of that, and get a you know ash gourd and get a pumpkin. I mean, this is the state of the world today. Right, because of the low bee population that's happening. So the thing is that, uh, very sadly, I mean, the bees are just trying to collect their, uh, you know, honey and keep it in the comb for their use at later time. You know, they're working, 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 and they have to have some rest. Now, when they have some rest and they store some food, we all go and take it from them and we kill all of them. So let me make it very clear. You may be a farmer and you may think I'll put seeds in the soil and I'll get food. No, it is not going to happen. If all the bee population comes down, right, we are not uh, going to get food. So this is something very important. We have to allow all the varieties of uh, uh, bees to live, to propagate. propagate. Uh, and if our you know, uh, population is increasing, that means more food. That means more, more plants, more flowers and more food. So how will more happen if there are no more bees? So please don't uh, go and go after honey. Uh, fix your uh, sugar craving. Please have you know enough of food every day. Thank you, Daryl. Our next question is: Is physically refined rice bran oil good for cooking? Okay, so I'll give a quick answer from a friend of mine who was uh, doing, he had this mill of refining uh, this rice bran oil, okay? And he told me that's one of the most poisonous oils because you know how it is made. Uh, he said, have you gone to the normal mill and uh, this? I said, yeah, I've taken, you know, uh, coconuts and get it crushed in the mill and all. He said, you stand over there and you see and the thing grows uh, slowly and it crushes, you get the oil, you get the copra and you come home, right? He says, uh, you know how rice, the rice bran is made? It is soaked in a petrocarbon. He told me that uh, uh, something with B, I am forgetting it right now. He's saying uh, uh, this rice, if you just crush it and all, oil doesn't come out. It is dissolved in that petrocarbon. Uh, and then that petrocarbon is evaporated. And what is left is the oil. He asked me, do you think that 100% of that gets evaporated? No, 1-2% of it remains inside. And that causes a sickness to the human body. And he stopped his entire business once he learned that. He stopped his uh, rice bread business. He's one of our guys in our Earth Keepers Core community. Uh, uh, I'm trying to still get the name of that chemical. Uh, I've written it down somewhere. With B, it starts. But yeah, that's, that's about rice. Just think about it. Groundnut, you crush it, you can see the oil over there. Coconut, you crush it, you can see the oil. Go and smash how much of rice you want. And, you know, tell me where the oil comes. You won't get that much of oil. So it's done through a chemical process, and that chemical residue is there in the oil, and that creates a lot of health problems. Thank you, Daryl. Um, our next question is by Suman D. Uh, don't we get iodine deficiency using rock salt only? What I uh, understand is that, uh, you know, the natural form of sea salt has iodine in it. Once it is uh, refined, then the iodine is uh, depleted, that natural iodine is depleted and then synthetic iodine is added to it. Uh, Daryl, you can uh, clarify this. Yes, so this iodine deficiency, right, um, that finally people are trying to get from, you know, uh, certain things like uh, uh, blue, like blueberries and all of that. 
uh, there is a disruption in the entire flow of water and minerals on this planet. So what happens is that uh, uh, the sea water, because of the heat and all, it evaporates and it's got all its 75 or 78 minerals that go up and they come down as rain. Now, when they come down as rain, in the natural pastures, all of those traces in the right balance of iodine and all go into the ground. Then they come up through the plants in all places that are naturally growing. But whichever places on this planet that human beings have been, you know, uh, uh, cultivating, and so so from where is this uh, this iodine coming? It's coming from the sky, and it's coming from uh, the the water, the brooks and streams. Of course, the brooks and streams only along its bank, certain things will grow, right? Uh, it's not that there are any pipes that are supplying it to fields. So human beings will uh, decide large patches of land. Then they will take, uh, you know, uh, the water and many times, of course, that's why I say we should never use tap water and all, you know, even if you're growing a small garden, because all that is, you know, uh, not natural water. So the first thing is uh, that they do the watering and then in uh, on one patch of land, they want to take out three crops in a year. So basically a lot of mineral extraction and when they know certain minerals are extracted, NPK, right? They will dump uh, this uh, NPK, all of that in. Who's dumping iodine inside? So what I'm saying is, those the iodine is not existing in the pro uh, proportion it is supposed to be existing on all the lands that are being farmed. And only because they are doing these three crops a year, they say, okay, let us put a lot of uh, NPK into the soil and they make up those nutrients. But the near iodine is not there. The actual iodine has to be coming in all our you know vegetation and all of that traces of iodine, and it's not coming because of our farming practices, and that's why we are deficient. And we have to find now ways to uh, fortify this and that with you know iodine. Actually, what I have found is a uh, <clears throat> few of the microgreens like uh, alpha alpha my, uh, that we grow all uh, microgreens <laughs> from alpha alpha. They had, uh, they have a uh, very good amount of iodine. So probably we can grow at our home and uh, and we can use it for uh, salads and all those things, those microgreens. So yes. there we get a very good source of iodine. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you, Naveen Kumar. Um, we have a question from uh, Vishwa Shah, um, who would like to know uh, that I got these palm jaggery plus coconut balls um, at a bakery, Goen Bakery. It was difficult to digest them initially. initially. Um, what about these? Are these good for health? Uh, same cycle is that having a sugar deficiency is going to make you take all of these. But in general, I've seen that if, yeah, if it's palm and the palm is you know grown organically, most of the palms in Goa organic because our even we have uh, i've got four uh, trees in my family plot and we just normally go and we just put all natural stuff in it only so the tree will be organic the jaggery will be organic uh, but yes uh, still it is uh, you know how often you take it and uh, as a replacement i found it that yeah it is uh, in health properties we consider it in goa at least healthier than sugarcane jack and uh, but still the same problem i always talk about uh, please uh, you know fix your sugar cravings by having enough amount of fruits in a day i have not used it since between uh, now uh, 2010 to 2021 yeah, 11 years i have not used any sugar added sugar in any of my food by mistake i go somewhere to some friends and if there's a house made you know homemade thing and they feel that i am uh, you know, uh, they feel bad if I don't eat it. So I eat it for their sake. I don't eat it because I need it. Uh, so, yes. So, completely this added sugar-free life uh, is possible. I've been doing it for, you know, now 11 years. Uh, it's amazing. And I only get my uh, uh, sugars from fruits. Or sometimes some dried fruit dates and all that. I don't eat much of dried fruits because that for me also is not a natural principle. I eat... If you're going to live and go by the principle, uh, uh, local, seasonal, organic, right? So you'll always eat what is fresh and season. 
you will not end up uh, so these dried fruits and all they are kept for later time where you want that little bit there's a deficiency there's not enough food in the other season or for athletes and all when i used to play badminton and all in my younger days yeah we used to eat these kind of energy bars and cakes and all that so for high energy that way thank you daryl i think you just answered the next question which was what is your opinion on eating raisins so yeah yeah so that uh, yes i would prefer to eat the grapes fresh when they are and the raisins would be for a time that is later now uh, one caution with the raisins okay because uh, even with all of these dry fruits um like for example people in india when i was in dubai and always to get it from the gulf so one big 2 kg packets come and then we bring it here and then we uh, make it into to like you know quarter quarter uh, kilo packets and we give it to friends and relatives now the main thing is how many times that bag was open how many times it was kept in the fridge and kept out so with that humidity humidity fungus and mold can grow on that now how will you know whether fungus or mold is grown on that you take out these uh, even if it's almond okay or raisin you soak it in water overnight in the morning in the water if you can see the water is not transparent generally the good almond it will be light brown color like a tea of you know almond light but it will be shining and transparent but if it's got a little bit of whitish for the almond or the raisins you know that there is mold in that water okay so the thing is you have to peel the almond and you have to eat it and you know maybe you have to uh this uh, clean up the grapes in some way uh, with vinegar water or something but this is the only problem with dry fruits that taking out bringing in all of the time and you can have because the moisture you can have uh, because they got all cracks on them right uh, they got uh, crevices so all of these things grow on them so that's one clear point why i do not like you know dry fruits kept for a long time i will first always soak them overnight and check out that the morning water and if there's no whitish in it at all then i know that's healthy and there's no fungus or mold on it and then i'll have it thank you daryl our next question is from vinny um does quinoa need to be soaked yes all millets need to be soaked they have a little bit of phytic acid so the minimum amount of soaking i would recommend at least 3 uh, or 4 hours all the millets because i've been selling about 12 millets here in goa on our earth keepers market so of course quinoa is the most expensive one then pearl millet which is uh, jawar then brown top then uh, green millet kodo millet banyard millet uh, brown top millet amaranth uh, finger millet which is of cause uh, called ragi then uh, this uh, proso millet or chin proso millet uh, and uh, yeah i seen that you know all uh, uh, millets they will require about three four hours of soaking and a little bit uh, of uh, phytic acid does come out from them that needs to be thrown out thank you um vasan would like to know what's what's best to add in your diet if you have a uh, constipation having lots of fruits and veggies lots of veggies in the noon helps and any seeds help anything else so for constipation so already you know of fruits and vegetables if he's eating so lots of fibers are already there so it should not be there in my opinion uh what else can be done or uh, maybe probiotic can be added uh, to that so that you know this problem can be solved probiotic is the colony of bacteria which help in the good digestion of the food and uh, release the constipation yeah uh, so i used to have uh, uh, ambali which i used to prepare at home uh, from millets fermenting of uh, millets so to that uh, to that probably you can load uh, one can load uh, with uh, good prebiotics like uh, good salads and all those things then if you have it then uh, that solves the problem of constipation that's what i actually i have observed <clears throat> i would just like to add you know the first step is the preventive stuff you start dropping those things that cause constipation and the first thing in that would be wheat and yes. even oats on a regular basis will cause constipation um i have noticed um, uh 
uh, in the fruit category there are just mild uh, it can cause a little bit of constipation uh, apples and grapes otherwise uh, uh, bananas and papayas they they you know are good for constipation believe it and um, uh, if you get access to my book it's a free download on my website becomehealthierexting.com just go into the chapter treatment for illnesses over there you'll see treatment for constipation so it will teach you there how to press your uh, liver points tracker pressure for your liver points to activate your liver because if your liver function and bile secretion is not good enough you could have constipation and even if your uh, colon fu function is sluggish you, you will see the colon points over there to press on your left and right hand even for the liver left and right and that will uh, there are some techniques there's a breathing thing there's a uh, conception vessel uh, meridian point to press over here okay so try all that in my book uh, for constipation and you know yeah uh, that will help thank you panelists uh, since we're running way out of time um, we'll take one last question from sean could you recommend healthy snacks for a 6 year old instead of biscuits so yes i said one time i used to promote you know this um, uh, millet cookies and you know baked millet cookies with uh, a natural you know uh, some flavors in them some of them were uh, having you know cumin seeds and all so you have uh, some that have got rock salt and cumin seeds for the namkeen side and then to make them sweet there would be little pieces of date or raisin or uh, something like that so millet biscuits are a convenient thing millet crackers also are convenient um the rest of yes Pratibha, do you have anything? Uh, for a six-year-old child, uh, <laughs> that is the best option which you are telling because uh, for them, you know, these cakes and pastries and biscuits, they are very appealing to them. So if I ask, uh, you know, the six-year-old child to have, you know, mm, uh, is uh, sprouts or maybe the chanas that will not appeal to them so that is the best option which you are saying that uh, millet cookies are the best uh, thing to do and also homemade any kind of uh, sweets that are not being made using the artificial sugar rather than using uh, dates and raisins that is the best option and i will just uh, like to add also these uh, laddus also if you make laddus of you know uh, uh, millet um, then of course uh, the safer practice would be now if you're making it at home you can do that you can take the millet soak it overnight you know or throw the water and then dry it and then you know make a flour of it give it to the mill for a flour and uh, from those you can make ragi laddus or you know other laddus and you have to have some binding things so for the binding things the people use that you know dink laddu and what not so you can use some natural you can use some dry fruits in them and some binding agents uh, so uh, yeah children like that also yeah day before yesterday i prepared a, a cookie from foxtail millet and also flaxseed it had come very well so, like, uh, probably if you want to have a namkin thing, you can add uh, salt and uh, those things, and it comes very good. So, one can try it out. Thank you, panelists. So, we've come to today's um, end of today's session. A big thank you to our three panelists, and a thank you to our audience for being with us today. We hope you've all found this webinar helpful and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow at the same time on the same link for our day 13 topic, growing healthy food using heirloom seeds. Namaste and have a wonderful evening.